true to my word for those who said, Oh, Curse Leo, you focusing too much on boxing. What about your movie reviews? It's like I just did the Dark Knight Rises, but I didn't do it on here. Now, this is for the people who have seen the Dark Knight Rises. If you've seen the Dark Knight Rises, this review is for you. This is all spoiler. We talk about the entire movie, all the things that you saw in the movie. So, of course, if you did this is the review you don't want to see, if you don't want to know nothing about the movie, shut it down. Shut it down. Hit the button. <coughs> Get out. But anyway, let's start off from the movie. Now, we all know eight years later, Batman's got the toe up knee. And he's living like a recluse in his mansion. And the company's in disarray. It's funny how they try to get the brother to run the company to the ground. And <laughs> leave everything in Fox control. But it's not his fault. Bruce Wayne really just let this project go down that he was working on. And he had the reactor built. And you found out that he just bailed on the project. He's just totally bored because the thrill and joy that he had as being Batman, the rush, is gone. Because there's nothing for him to really do. There's no real super villain out there that's threatening Gotham. You know, so he's just bored since the Joker. So the Joker's imprint is left throughout this movie because nothing's changed. Nothing's really changed. It's not like everything is peacetime. Crime is still what it is. Unemployment is what it is. It's a, all the rich are benefiting. And it's boring. Especially when somebody's been as high as Bruce Wayne. But now you're seeing a whole different element with Bane. This is what I liked about the movie. With Bane, you didn't know what was going on when you saw him steal the plane and all of his things and with the voice you can tell immediately they changed it so if you saw the prologue in the show he was like oh, 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 oh. you know they even proved it to I mean it was like Bane speakers were like right on my ears and I could hear Bane clearly I'm like wow it don't even seem like the voice was fitting like it was coming from the mask you know you can see like the voice coming from the person it's not like the voice is just coming from the, from, the, from the sky where the gods are. It's like the voice is coming from out there. And they just had showed a picture of me. And I'm like, oh yeah, they fixed this voice. But here it is. This is what I don't like. I, well, I don't understand why they even did this. Okay, Gorn gets hurt by Bane in the sewers. That's perfectly fine. And I like the way they tied realism into it. They just didn't take you know, a whole army underground and they just start tearing up the, you know, the sewers and building. He actually had work permits from a, from a billionaire who was trying to take over Bruce Wayne's company. So all the things that they had were legit. They had legit contracts to go out there and do this work. Nobody knew what the work they were doing, but they had the contracts to do it. That's what was important to me was the realism. Instead of just having this one guy just come in and just start taking over, it was done in a proper manner and they had money to protect and move him around in silence and hide him out from the public's eye and when he get ready to make his move then it didn't matter. So I thought that was very important. And here's a fact that I was trying to talk about uh, a couple, a couple of, think about a minute ago before I got caught off track with the main subject is this thing that I didn't like and it was the Bruce Wayne thing it's like they put this knee brace on it's not even explained where he got it I guess it's from Fox I'm just assuming it is and right away it fits the fact that he has no cartilage and he's able to kick pillars and bricks or whatever and put holes in them so now he's back walking straight you know this guy was on a cane he had no cartilage in his knee Anybody else, they're saying the physical combat and activity isn't for you anymore. So I like the fact that they had the wear and tear on Batman to show that, hey, buddy, you're getting too old for this. You know, so and here's Bane, younger, faster, stronger, and not even in his prime, you know, like Alfred. I'm glad they had Alfred in the movie the way he did. 
they had him in at a very select time to say this is how long we want Alfred in this movie because he wasn't needed. A lot of people oh, Alfred needed to be in the movie. No, he did not. He just Alfred was never really a, a intricate part of the movie. All he does is to add a couple of brain twisters for Bruce Wayne and help give him ideas that can benefit him down the road. When he gives uh, a scale of a of some form or he said Alfred bring the car, Alfred do this and that, but uh, this movie Alfred was really needed to do exactly what he did, then leave, then come back at the end of what he did. He didn't need to be in the middle. Because one, that man was really old <laughs> to even need Alfred. Alfred wasn't even there. He didn't need him. So everybody played their part, I think, enough. We didn't need to see Commissioner Gordon all the time. I don't even think we needed to see him that much involved with what was going on at the end. I think we just needed the, the John Lovers character, you know, who we find out that his name was Robin, because we all know no one said he wouldn't have Robin in his movie. And then there's another question I got, like, is he going to... I'm way to the end. But anyway, <laughs> going through those emotions, you have the situation with the daughter. Everybody at this point in the movie, you're thinking Bane is the son of Raja Gu, which if you follow the comics, that's no way possible. That is the truth. But you're cool with it. You're cool with everything that's happening right now. Now, the girl who winds up being the daughter of Raja Gu, the big twist at the end, and when she shakes Batman, because I'm the child. Bane didn't get out. I did. That's why Bane was so shocked when Batman got out. He put him in there like, first of all, I broke you. Which means like, I broke you over my knee. I know you were broken. You could not move your legs. How did you get to move your legs? Which I found out to be pretty weird too. The guy that goes from behind and it looked like he stuck something up Batman's butt. I mean, the he was joking, but if I, I watched it again, I laughed because that's exactly what it looked like. He was like, Ugh. And he broke his back. He was like, yeah, I heard it out here. And he went behind him and, Ugh. And Batman's back was fixed. And he just hung him up there. I just went to the film and come back in your legs. So, that was it. Batman was, in a couple of months, he, I mean, he wasn't even a, maybe it was a month or two. And he was back exercising and back doing sit-ups and push-ups, getting himself in shape so he can go after Bane. So he gets out. Bane never got out. He got rescued out. The girl is the one that got out, who's the daughter of Raja Akum. But if you didn't see her from Inception or anything else she's been in, she's been crooked. She never looked like somebody you could trust. I mean, I knew she was crooked from the beginning. I didn't know she was going to be Raj Agu's daughter or that. I just knew she was crooked. And I said, oh yeah, he's keeping her alive and things. She can come here. I was like, yeah, she's crooked. And then at the end, it just kind of robbed it for me. That's the only problem I have with this movie. And it's not a huge problem. It's the fact that they made Bane to be a minion to this girl. That just did it. I was like, no, no, no. Why would you do that? You know, I'm glad they didn't, like, hard for it. They did it for just that scene. But it was like he was taking orders from her the whole time. You know, it's like, Bane is kind of the guy that's in control. I don't like the Bane that's sitting there taking orders from this girl and she's the real head of the movement. You know, it, it's, it kind of, like, lost me for a minute. You know, I've seen this plot before. You know, it, it doesn't surprise me. It was in an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, Collateral Damage, where he did the same thing, where this guy was the whole terrorist, and at the end, he was taking orders. So, to, from this girl, he became the minion at the end. And it's like, come on, man. That Schwarzenegger movie, man? I didn't like that, that part at all. And that's what it threw me back to. Threw me right back to Collateral Damage. And I said, I, I ain't really going to do this. Yes, they did. So you got the collateral damage ending there. But this is where the movie continues. Okay, Catwoman blows Bane away with something that just blew away a hole through like 27 cars. And you see Bane's body fly over in the corner. I'm like, his, his body 
shouldn't even be there right now. It should have just been a blank spot there. So, Bane's gone. Batman is back on the move. He is just was stabbed. Like, shanked. Like, in the, the liver or kidney. He's walking around like he's okay again. Uh, he's flying the ship. Dodging missiles. I'm like, okay, he, I, maybe, I don't know how he healed so quick from the shank, because when she shanked him, she talked for like 35 minutes. So he got a full story with, while a knife was still in him. She didn't take the knife out until she got ready to go. Now, after that, Bane goes and, I mean, Bane's gone, Batman goes and stops her catches her, they get the bomb after she falls over and dies when the when the truck falls over. But Gordon who's back with the bomb, falls down with her, he's okay. Like I said, they shouldn't have had him play that role at all instead of letting the Robin guy stay with the kids and they they could have just cut Gordon out. Let Gordon go run with those kids and had a younger guy who needed to be in that position do that role. Then Batman goes off, the automatic pilot don't work, and he goes over the sunset with the bomb, and it blows up. He had about five seconds to get out. All of this is logical, but here's what people are talking about the end, when the kid finds out his name is Robin. So they like, oh, so he's going to be Robin. No. He's not going to be Robin. They just threw that in there to, for you, because he played basically the role that Robin plays. He helped Batman, he was an assistant to Batman basically, without the cape or whatever. So he basically was Robin in this whole movie. His role was Robin. When I saw the preview, I said, okay, well, he's going to be Robin. That's what I thought, but since his character name was something else, it threw everybody off. So when they found out, okay, his name was Robin, that's it, that's nothing. Batman was telling him that Batman could be anybody. That's what the, the, the whole match meant. It could be anybody. It was a symbol. He's trying to tell him and teach him everything he's teaching him. Okay, I hope it's not a call. Okay, good. Not a call. Message. Okay, it's a call. But that's what it meant. So, it wasn't an imagination. It was definitely... It was definitely more of Batman passing the torch to this kid so he can go and live the life and you know when Alfred says okay well somebody really wants to get in contact with me and I have to take this call but when Alfred said we're going to go ahead and uh Alfred uh, said that when he was at the restaurant and he wanted to see Bruce Wayne with his family and kids and all the good fun stuff, well, that's what happened. <laughs> he saw Bruce Wayne. People said, well, that was a, a, the imagining. He was imagining. Then why would Catwoman be there? I mean, granted, he hasn't saw her since the beginning of the movie, but he didn't see those two together like a dating thing. So why would he imagine her being there with Bruce, Bruce Wayne with us? Bruce Wayne was there with Selena Kyle and Catwoman, or whatever you want to call her, and that was that. So both of them went out of the picture, and that's where he needed to go. He found the woman that was perfect for him, and now they can go and live happily ever after. That's what it was all about, and I enjoyed the movie tenfold, and I'll, the next review we'll do, we'll compare the Dark Knight to the Dark Knight Rises, but that's my whole take on it. I'm out.